So we're just going to record. We're not going to, I'm not a perfectionist. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kringen, Seattle. I was just in a therapy support group for people and I didn't share anything. I just listened to the others. Uh, in the past, I share and I feel a little defensive uh, because my opinions seem to be different than most of the people. For instance, I'm not on any medications um, and I've never had a substance abuse problem. I've never been into drinking alcohol or smoking cigarettes or marijuana or doing any kind of drugs. I'm very, I'm highly sensitive and I never, even as a teenager, went through a phase of partying and drinking and smoking and doing any drugs. And um, not that I'm judging other people, but I don't relate. I, do, I don't relate to wanting to drink or smoke or do drugs, but I do have obsessive compulsive thinking and what really holds me back, the therapy support group was partly about what holds you back from achieving your goals and being a success. And I thought, okay, I didn't feel like sharing in the group today, but I was thinking what holds me back is my own fear of success and also being haunted by people who have made fun of me or bullied me or criticized me or misunderstood me. So being self-conscious about what other people think of me partly holds me back. And my mom and dad both raised me partly to be a creative, open-minded person, but they also, my parents both raised me to kind of fear success, which is strange because most people mostly, I think, fear failure so-called failure, but what is success and what is failure? If you love what you do, see, to me, success is if you do what you love and you can make a living at it somehow, not that you have to be rich and famous. Success doesn't mean you're rich and famous. In fact, a lot of successful people end up committing suicide because they're not even happy. And so so-called fame doesn't necessarily make somebody happy, but to me, success is not being rich and famous necessarily. Success is doing what you love and somehow making a living. Or like me, I guess I am kind of successful because I make a living being an art model and a medical model, and that pays my bills. Even though I'm low income, I do survive doing something creative and freelance and interesting. And then I do my art mostly for free. I guess for me, for me to rise up to the next level of my own personal success would be to be able to make a living with my artwork, with my photography, with my different creative projects. Um, and so I was listening and my mom is an artist and my dad has written comedy and music and he's an athlete. He's, you know, really athletic even now in his seventies and he's super, super fit and um, he's written folk music and he's getting back into his music. But both my parents raised me to fear success. They didn't mean to do that, but they. my dad used to say people were overrated or underrated. My dad has lots of opinions about what's good comedy, what's good music, what's good art, and what's not good art. And different people, it's subjective. Different people judge things in different ways. And so my parents were both very honest with me about their opinions, too much so when I was a little kid. And so I felt discouraged. So my lesson is to push myself past all of the judgment, like to do my best, because I'm afraid that if I'm, if I really indulge in my talent and my creativity and I do my best and I sort of show off my talent, Sometimes other people are jealous of people who are talented. And I know that not everything I do is brilliant, but I know that I have a lot of talent and some of my, my art is really, really, really good. I think very unique. I have my own style and I have confidence in that, but I don't want it to be about my ego. I don't want my success or failure to be about my ego. I want it to be about doing what I love. That's another reason why I love the musician Tom Petty. Tom Petty widens my jetty because Tom Petty was a famous rock star, very wealthy and very famous, but he never, people who knew him 
if you listen to them being interviewed about Tom Petty, they say he was never really full of his own ego. He never kind of had this sort of I'm a rock star ego. He remained humble and grateful. And he remained completely in love with the music. Of course, Tom Petty enjoyed his success, I'm sure, on a commercial financial level. He enjoyed his success materialistically because he could afford to buy good equipment. Like, you know, he had good amps and good, like, um, soundboard. You know, he was really into the old style, high quality amps and high quality musical equipment. He never went into the full digital modern because they said it was kind of cold and tinny um, and the old equipment holds up and so the Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers rock and roll band up until their last record Hypnotic Eye in 2014 they were still using equipment some would say old style old school equipment they were still using guitars and amps and still recording their music you know not that there's anything wrong with artists who use electronic technology. Like I love Imogen Heap. She's a musician who uses um, digital gloves and does very experimental things with modern technology. And she does really beautiful work, beautiful music, Imogen Heap. Um, <clears throat> but Tom Petty is a different kind of, uh, Neil Young and Tom Petty are both more into the analog equipment and high quality. And so what I'm saying is my, what holds me back as is um, thinking that it's egotistical for me to be too into what I'm doing and that other people will think I'm a narcissist or other people will think I'm only care about myself, that I'm selfish. So to be successful with your art and your creativity, you have to kind of be a little bit self-centered and give yourself permission to kind of go off by yourself. And last night I got a new camera I finally have a more high quality camera. This is a very small camera, but it's a, a Canon M50. It's got the flip screen that I love. So you can uh, do uh, selfies there. I'll do my reflection. You can do really good uh, self-portrait videos and photos with this camera because of the flip screen helps you direct yourself. And I work best <clears throat> alone. I've worked with a lot of really other talented people. And when I model for artists, I work with other people and that's great. And I enjoy that. I collaborate in that way. But when I really do my art, I'm, I like being alone. And so I work alone with my camera and my microphones. And so I'm happy to, I'm, I'm excited to try this out. This is the kit lens, 15 to 45. I also have a 22 millimeter prime lens uh, that, F, F2 that lets in a lot of light. So I'm just learning more technical stuff about photography to improve my work. Because let's be honest, I'm mostly a self-taught photographer. And I won't really say I'm a photographer in terms of lenses and equipment, but I'm a, a very creative person that has a background in design. And so I know color and composition. I'm trained in design and color and composition. So whether I paint or draw or photograph or write a poem uh, or play music, I play the keyboard, I do improvisational monologues like the one I'm doing right now. Uh, my artwork is very improvisational, including my photography. I don't really like to set up the shot. And so I'm, I'm just learning that what holds me back is my own fear of being too self-indulgent or too full of my own ego. And so Tom Petty, it inspires me to think about Tom Petty. Tori Amos is another favorite musician and Edie Brickell, actually Edie Brickell, Tom Petty and Tori Amos, all three of them are very, very good musicians in my opinion, very good songwriters. And yet none of them seem to be full of their own ego in a negative way. They both seem to be examples to me of people who are kind and compassionate and really, really love the music that they create. And they seem very grateful and generous and yet focused on their own music and doing their best. So I really admire people who are not afraid to focus. If you have, cause I have talent and I don't wanna waste it. And so it's time for me to step up and not apologize for being talented. And even if some people don't think I'm talented, uh, I need to focus on my own self-confidence in my talent because it's true that I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I think some of my non-representational non paintings are really good, but only people who understand design, color, and composition appreciate my work. Not everybody likes um, 
for instance, abstract. Well, this one I call Winsong Spiral Drive. This is just a, a cropped. Um, this is part of a, a, a drawing that I did. It's abstract, non-representational. And not everybody likes this kind of art, but I think this is well done. And um, some of my photography, some people prefer my photography and some people prefer my paintings. And I need to focus on what I love. I need to do what I love and do my best and then let people take it or leave it. And including my own self-critical voice in my head. Like I'm the, sort of the opposite of a perfectionist. I'm so afraid because both my parents are kind of perfectionists and that's held them back with their creative work. You know, it's, they've stopped themselves from fully trying to be successful with their art because my dad with his comedy and music and my mom with her visual art, in my opinion, because they're perfectionists. They never think it's quite good enough or they never quite finish to some extent. Um, and so I've done the opposite. I've rebelled against being a perfectionist. And so maybe I need to learn to edit and maybe I'm not picky enough sometimes. Like I do lots of art and I just put it all out there. Like I even put my rough drafts, like my poems, my music, my photography and my paintings. Some of it is really good. I think some of my art is really good and some of it isn't as good. Um, it's sloppy sometimes and quick. I'm not real patient, but some of my art I think is really great. And if I could give myself advice, I'd say learn to edit, learn to mostly show your best work and edit out the rest or say to people, here's my best work. If you're really interested in my work, here is the not as good work to show you my process. Because part of what I like to do is show people my process. And I like the idea of my art is very therapeutic to me. And Tori Amos and Tom Petty have both talked about music helping them feel better emotionally. When you have a challenge, music can help you. So I feel like my visual art has helped me. So part of what I do, what I, I think I create beautiful art, but I also do it for therapeutic reasons. So it's dual purpose. And I'm thinking a new idea I have is with my photography because I take self-portraits because I'm kind of a shy person in some ways, even though I'm an art model and a medical model uh, and I work with people in that way and I'm comfortable, but I'm kind of socially a bit shy and sensitive and introverted. There's nothing wrong with being an introverted. I'm just saying I'm more internally focused. Um, so I use the camera to help me bring me out of my shell and boost my confidence. Uh, when other people photograph me, I sometimes look kind of awful. Sometimes photographers have gotten great photos of me, but usually I don't look as good when other people photograph me. And when I photograph myself, I look amazing. Like, I'm not afraid, like, okay, here on the wall behind me, here are, here's an example of those are all art that I've done of myself. There's the waterproof underwater one. There's the black and white in the bathroom with fancy lighting. There's my painting with my self-portrait fused on top. And there's my face paint one that I did and my hand-painted shoes. So that's some of my artwork that I did by myself. And I think some of the most powerful portraits of me are the ones I've taken of myself, not really, not really photos that other people have taken of me. Uh, there's a few exceptions. Some photographers have done amazing portraits. Uh, Monty Knowles in the Bahamas did amazing. He did the best photos of me ever. He's the most talented photographer I've ever worked with because he's, he's technically very good with his camera equipment, but he also knows how to direct the model. If the model isn't, some models are amazing and they just pose and the photographer gets amazing shots with them without much effort. I'm a model who needs to be encouraged. I need the photographer to say, turn your head this way, turn your head that way, think some happy thoughts or think some, thinks about something flirtatious, think about Tom Petty, think about something that you think is, you know, beautiful and attractive. And so that helps me become a better model when the photographer directs me. So I like the idea of expanding this photo therapy to include other people. So I think I might start wanting to take portraits of other people and help them, especially people who don't feel confident in front of a camera. If you think you're not photogenic, I wanna to try to take pictures of you to make you look your best and get the best lighting and the best angle and the best expression on your face. 
to make you look the most beautiful, authentically you that I can help you look on a, in front of a camera. So I'm thinking of doing that. So I just wanted to share that. That's all for today. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. I'm a multimedia artist and model. And I'm just learning as I go. It is now March 23rd, 2021. ShannonKringen.com is my website. Yay. Bye for now.